I'm Partha Paila. I'm the Vice President of Product Solutions and Design. We're excited to provide a sneak peek into what's on the horizon. But first, please allow me to recap some of the amazing technologies we have announced this morning. Firstly, the fungible F1 DPU. It is a revolutionary new class of microprocessor powering our storage arrays. It is optimized for data-centric computations and data interchange at massive scale. Second, the fungible S1 DPU, a host-side silicon that immediately frees up CPU cores by completely offloading all storage, networking, and security tasks. And lastly, we have the fungible True Fabric technology that offers end-to-end -end compression and ensures consistently low tail latency even at high levels of network saturation. Now, every one of these technologies is a significant achievement in itself, but using them all together as a foundation, we will be able to quickly realize the vision of hyper-disaggregated data centers where all hardware resources are pooled for easy management. Now, let's talk about what to do with such hyper-disaggregated resources. After all, the ultimate destiny of any resource is its consumption. In order to consume these resources, we need to forge them into a form that fits our needs. We call this composition. So in other words, hyper-disaggregation transforms your data center resources into pools, and composition allows us to dip into those pools and in real time, construct servers with any characteristics we need. This kind of just-in-time composition provides data center administrators with an unprecedented level of agility. We all know modern data centers must be able to host a wide variety of workloads, and each type of these workloads often requires a different hardware configuration. Some workloads need a small boot disk and access to a large shared storage, and potentially even a GPU, while others may need multiple disks of local storage for caching and data purposes. Yet others may need local storage with a different quality of service level for each disk. Sometimes, a single workload itself needs multiple types of configurations for each of their subfunctions. For example, a workload like Splunk often needs a different hardware configuration for its indexer nodes than, let's say, for its search head nodes. And we have not even mentioned the number of NICs each of these workloads may need. This forces data center administrators to plan for, purchase, and deploy islands of resources where each island is unique to a type of workload. And because, for all practical purposes, these resource configurations are immutable after purchase, it is inevitable that islands of inflexible resource pools emerge over time. It is no wonder that utilization levels of a typical data center are abysmally low. So over the last decade and a half, to escape these constraints of hardware rigidity and to gain the agility needed to manage the needs of diverse customers, administrators are forced into virtualization. But this is a deal with the devil. Virtualization gets us the flexibility we need, but we have to give up on performance. We have to live with the complexity of all the additional layers of management. And then there is the emerging breed of applications that are extremely performance hungry. They need every measure of performance that can be wrung out of hardware. Big data, AI, machine learning, and container workloads prefer or more accurately require to run directly on hardware to satisfy their insatiable performance needs. So what we really need is the agility of virtualization without giving up on performance or simplicity. Imagine a world where you have successfully hyper-disaggregated and pooled all your data center resources. For compute, you now have a few types of general purpose diskless servers, uh, each with a host side fungible DPU in it. For storage, you have a sea of capacity and per volume quality of service provided by our scale out fungible storage arrays. For networks, you have whatever TORs or other infrastructure that you currently have in place. And you also have pools of other types of resources like GPUs uh, with host side DPUs in them and so on. So you start with a general purpose server, then imagine specifying the desired geometry of a server, the disks, the network interface cards, and the GPUs you need in that server, and having such a server composed for you in real time. Let's take a concrete example. Let's say we want to deploy a single server workload with a generic Ubuntu operating system. In the composer, we call the set of resources needed to deploy a single workload an environment. So let's create an environment and call it Ubuntu base OS. In this environment, 
we can now define the geometry of the server we need for this workload. Let's call the geometry for this type general purpose server. We only need one such server for this workload. Let's say from a compute perspective, we want a server with 12 cores and 64 gig memory. Uh, from a storage perspective, let's specify three disks, uh, one for boot, uh, one for cache, and one for data. Uh, we can specify individual quality of service levels for each disk in the server as well. And finally, from a networking perspective, let's specify a NIC and the network it should join. And that's it. The composer selects a candidate that matches the compute specifications from the disaggregated pool of disk servers and composes the disks and NICs as specified. We can now console into this newly minted server and see the various composed disks. For the workload, these appear just as local NVMe disks. Similarly, we can also see the NIC and the network we specified. So that's it. It is as easy as that to compose a server. Based on this core tenet of composition are many other capabilities, all aimed at dramatically simplifying the life of a data center administrator. For example, the composer also has marketplaces of application templates. Administrators can templatize even their most complex clustered applications and put them in these marketplaces, all ready to be deployed with a single click. Here's an example of a template for a GPFS environment that includes two geometry profiles, one for the workers in the cluster with three instances and another for the management node of the cluster with one instance. The compute specifications, disks, the gold master images for those disks and the NICs are already defined in the template. So all that is left to do is specify the network. The specified servers are automatically composed, imaged, and configured. You can see the topology of each composed server of the environment by clicking on the instance properties here. As you can see, this virtualization-like capability to compose servers of arbitrary geometries dramatically simplifies the day-to-day -day operations of a data center administrator. And all this agility is backed by the incredible performance of the underlying fungible DPUs. This is truly a world without hardware silos. And most importantly, you get all this without having to change your applications in any shape or form. So the ability to hyper-disaggregate all the resources in a data center, combined with the flexibility to compose whatever servers a workload needs, finally makes it possible for us to bend the arc of data center evolution towards simplicity and higher utilization. It frees us from the tyranny of being constrained by hardware choices made in the past. It allows us to refocus our efforts on whatever is needed by the workload in the present. And it provides us with the true agility needed to support newer workloads in the future. We have finally realized the promise of infrastructure as code without compromising on performance. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. The fungible data center solution has many other exciting capabilities. We cannot wait to bring them to you soon, so stay tuned and thank you.